Okay, and we're live. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Megan Sano, and I have the pleasure of representing Ski Racing Media this week during Virtual Gear Week. Um, while this is our third live session of Virtual Gear Week, we have many brands presenting their latest and greatest products for the upcoming season. So if you haven't already, you can register for the rest of the events on our website under Virtual Gear Week on the homepage. Um, tonight's third session of the week is a special one. This is one of our favorite brands that many of you know probably pretty well. Please welcome Atomic. Um, I'd like to introduce you to my good friends and senior community marketing manager, Paul Geeman and Steve Brown, Atomic's Western community marketing lead, along with Kaz Kasumi, who's the Eastern community marketing lead. Um, today, these gentlemen will be walking us through this year's products with the help of a few special guests. So without further ado, Guy, please take it away and tell us all about the upcoming season of products. Great, thanks. Thanks, Megan. Hi, everybody. It's great to be back for our second annual uh, virtual gear week. So excited. Um, you know, we are out in the field uh, with my good friend, Steve Brown. We are out in the field where last year we weren't traveling that, that much, but we're gonna see you, everybody here through the fall. But we felt like this was a really good opportunity to just reach out and say hi to everybody and connect with you. So as Megan introduced Steve, who runs the West and Kazumi, you wanted to say hi so everybody gets a, to see your pretty face. Hey everyone. Excellent. And then we have two really special guests. So um, our, our marketing man, <clears throat> excuse me, our market manager up in Canada, Blair Blackie, who is our sage, um, Mr. Jake Strasberger is on some well-earned vacation and Blair Blackie, who just happens to run our business up in Canada and also is a U12 coach, which is so exciting to have. So Blair, you wanted to say hi and- Hi everybody, thanks for having me from the Great Lake North. Awesome. And then our, our final guest, fourth and final guest um, for a return appearance, Mr. Darren Rawls, former U.S. ski team athlete. I mean, it just goes on and on. World champion, St. Anton and Super G, Han and Kong winner, um, multiple Olympics, uh, Laberhorn winner, seven U.S. national championship titles. And that was just while he was skiing for the ski team. And since he's retired, I mean, he's doing so much more with the Red Bull brand. And now, Darren, you know, his twins are both U16, um, U16 athletes. And it's interesting for us. I mean, we are really passionate about ski racing. Blair's coaching. Kaz is actually still racing. I think his points are in the 40s. His dad, Naga, is a coach at Stratton and coaches U14s. My wife, Allison, is a U12 coach. So, I mean, we have all these special connections and it, you know, it's really great, Darren, to have you here. Um, so why don't you just say hi and kind of just catch us up on what you've been up to. Hey, Guy. Yeah, uh, one, thanks for joining everybody. Uh, you know, this is pretty exciting. Like Guy says, uh, year two, this virtual ski race night. And, uh, you know, proud to be on this with Atomic, the boys at Atomic. Um, my first... I grew up skiing on Atomic and then switched over to another brand and then came back and in my first year racing World Cup, I won my first two World Cup races. So it's been a, I mean, that's been since 2000. So it's been a, a pretty amazing run for me with the brand and, and uh, still to this day, I mean, past my competitive um, World Cup uh, career, I've been doing a lot of stuff with Atomic and uh, have always kind of still drop in and doing some pacing for NASTAR, doing some coaching, special camps like Far West Masters Camp coming up in Copper, Colorado, I do American Downhill Camp. And then in Tahoe, I'm, you know, just bouncing around different ski resorts and, and working with a lot of different athletes. So it's fun, you know, and I say, uh, you know, I'm, I'm staying in touch with the U.S. ski team and I run in Breezy Johnson skis. I ran her downhill boards in last year at Copper, a couple um, runs, and again in Mammoth. And, you know, I've, I've kind of just dropped in this, like, mentor sort of, like, um, I guess, position for some of the, the top athletes, and we've stayed in touch. And one thing that I want to touch on, Guy and I were talking about, is, like, 
to mental health, you know, and, and, um, you know, that's like really important these days. And, you know, mental health to me is, is being confident in what you're doing, you know, and, and that comes with a lot of preparation, uh, working hard. And I asked Breezy last uh, year after she had two World Cup thirds in downhill, uh, I'm like, what's changed for you, you know, and she's like, bottom line, confidence. And it's no joke, you know, that's what I felt like I had. Um, Bodie had a lot of it, uh, my teammate when I was racing against him, and we were really confident as a team, and we fed up each other and did amazing things on the, on the World Cup, but it's always, like, it never changes. You know, it's the same stuff. Um, so Breezy, like, she knew she worked really hard. She was confident with what she did on snow and just took into racing. So what I got to tell all the ski racers out there is just, believe in yourself, you know, and, um, but you got to put a lot of time into preparation and you got to ski on the best stuff. Was it the register, you know, like skis and boots, like, otherwise you have no chance. So that's, so, <laughs> if, if I may, if I may chime in here. So how do you spend time with your kids? What do you do to help build their confidence? And just from a parent, you know, I mean, you as a special parent, having the background that you do, what are the things that you do with the kids? With well, you know, ski a lot. Yeah, so I think it's really important to ski a lot. And, you know, just in the gates, free skiing, just like every type of snow you can get, um, you just put time on on uh, the mountain. And, you know, we're limited as far as ski races. We don't have a lot of time to be on snow. We can't be going to a basketball court every single day and shooting hoops, making moves. Like we had to take, we had to travel a lot. We got to make the most out of it. So, you know, even days that you're scheduled to go train, if you have a, a window to go get some free skiing in, do that. And you know, the more time you can ski, the better. Um, oh, that's great. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so I say that. Um, so another another thing that I'm interested in. I mean, what what have you done so far? Do you have the kids' equipment ready for the season? Are you organized with all their gear? And what what have you done? What's what's the status of that? Yeah. In well, the, in uh, the garage. Yeah, we got boots kind of already, like almost set up. You know, yeah. and for this year, and then skis, I've, I tuned the skis. I've been um, dialing them in, you know, just get them complete tuned. And, and Dre's actually doing his, uh, you know, waxing and scraping, brushing, doing some cycles on those. Great. And it's just, you know, a little prep work before you get them on snow helps quite a bit to condition the base. But, you know, they're, they're tuned to, as well as I can tune them. Ready. So, uh, so they're ready to go. When are you, when are you guys going to, as a family, be back on snow or like, what are the, what's the kids schedule? Are they going to copper or do you guys have stuff at Palisades coming up? I mean, you know, or at sugar at sugar bowl, but where do you guys ski most of the time? Yeah, we're, we're all the Tahoe. Um, we've been uh, at sugar bowl for a long time. The kids grew up skiing there and it's uh you know, do the Far West Race Series, which goes from Mammoth to now Palisades, which is the Squaw Alpine name change has happened today. Yep. Um, you know, and that's uh, as U16s, now they're going to start branching out a little more. So we were yep. at Mount Hood for a couple of days, and then uh, I'll be going to Copper to coach uh, this camp, and Dre's going to be over there as well. Good. And that's, uh, I think, 11th of November will be on snow. Cool. Well, listen, I hope – it's great to have you on. I hope you can stay on for the, you know, duration. Um, if that's not cutting into your busy schedule. Um, so what I want to do is just jump into kind of the reasons why we're here tonight. And it's great to have Darren and Blair and, and Kaz and Steve. So for us, there's a lot of stuff we want to cover tonight, but one thing is we want you to get to know our team. So Steve and Kaz are out there. Kaz is going to drop into the comment section my, my contact info, Steve's contact info, and his own contact info. So if you guys need to reach out to us to just get connected with our brand and find out where you're supposed to go buy gear or however we can help. So we're going to do that for you. The other thing we want to do tonight is that we we're here that we want to connect you guys. I mean, you guys are all pretty connected already, but if there's not, if there's some people that need to get connected with our retailers, I mean, Megan is going to send out with her team an email um, later this week, right? I think Megan, um, and it's going to have our dealer list with over a hundred atomic race dealers in it. 
it's going to have our catalog and it will have our race pricing. So all that stuff is going to come to you. So that's great. And then I want to just quickly mention um, two of the two of our um, Atomic Pro Centers, Dave Rogers and his team at Rogers Ski and Sports back in Lincoln, New Hampshire, and Chuck Ginsburg at a Racer's Edge in Breckenridge. Our pro centers are the tip of the spear for when it comes to atomic product. They carry the most product of, uh, you know, of most retailers in the world, actually. I mean, they just have tremendous, tremendous product inventory and then boot fitting specialty, setting up your skis, tuning, waxing, fixing our skis when we need them fixed after demos. <laughs> so, I mean, it's great to have those guys. So they're, they're in the mix along with all our other dealers, not to take anything away from them, but it's just really cool to have those guys here. And then once Steve, Steve's going to jump in and do some product stuff, but we're going to play stump the expert. So the experts are Darren and uh, Blair, and we'll try to hit in there. And Kaz, if you have any questions about rules or anything like that, Kaz is on point for that. But for now, what I'd like to do is turn it over to Steve, and Steve's going to jump into um, a couple categories that you might not know that we make, but it's protective and um, gear, and our helmets and goggles and poles. We've got some really dynamic new stuff that Steve's going to jump into it, and then we'll come back after that, take a little break, and then jump into skis, boots, and bindings. Right on. Awesome. So I'm going to start with uh, something shiny and new for us this season. It is our new Redster Connected Race Helmet. So Connected is a pretty cool technology that we have that allows you to download an app on your cell phone and connect it with your helmet via Wi-Fi or via Bluetooth. So once you have that connected and everything, you can go and ski. And if you were to have a bad crash or even just a minor crash, it's going to tell you where the impact the, on, on the helmet was, whether it's on the side, on the top, in the back. It'll give you a rating between green, orange, and red. Uh, green being a light impact, um, obviously, and red being a, a major impact. Um, and it'll also tell, let you keep track of whether you need to have your helmet looked at after a big crash. Because a lot of times you're out there and you have a big crash, your helmet might look OK, but really what's inside that keeps you safe isn't good for, for you know, a dozen big crashes. So to be able to track that within this app is pretty important. Um, what it also has within the app is you can put in a, uh, like a, a phone number for somebody in case you do have a bad fall. If you have a really bad fall and it registers that, that bad impact, it'll then call that person and give them a notification and a GPS uh, location for where you crashed and what the injury, like where it took place. Um, on top of all that cool technology that's within the helmet, we also have our, uh, our AMID protection, which is the atomic multi-impact directional uh, protection. So it's essentially um, helps distribute the, the uh, impact before it actually hits all the way straight to the head. Um, so all of our helmets with AMID are 40% safer than the industry standard. Um, they also have the 360 RS live fit within. So you can go in and you can change all the different pads and make sure you have a perfect fit right out of the box. Um, these helmets come with the option to do a quick release slalom bar. So instead of having to mess around with a bunch of different things, you can just go right on there and do a quick swap, uh, whether you're training in the morning and afternoon. Um, so that's pretty cool. But there really are like a high level fit and number one thing is making sure that you're safe out there. And if you do have a crash, we're taking care of you. So I think you should really check this out if you're in the market for a new, uh, a new helmet. It's the Redster Connected Helmet with our ShockSense technology. And it's all FIS approved. And it's all FIS approved. Yeah. We now have helmets all the way from the junior helmet all the way up that are FIS approved. Cool. Um, to go along with this helmet, we also have our Saber Big RS goggle which features our fusion double lens. So instead of having a, a double lens that has a foam separator that adds to your light refraction, there is no separation. It's a laminate on top of another lens. 
So you still get that anti-fog, you still get the clear vision, but you also get a 20% wider view within the lens from a normal uh, double lens that you might find somewhere else. These RS goggles also come with two other lenses. So within the whole thing, you have three lenses in the goggle and they come in this awesome little carrying pack that takes care of them with uh, a lens white microfiber so you can keep, keep good care of them. Um, we also have a range of poles going from your basic aluminum poles all the way up to the high-end RS carbon poles. Uh, they're carbon reinforced. So if you do take a slalom gate a little bit low, they're not just gonna snap on you like on the regular carbon poles. And we also have this really cool is this quick release pole system. So you can go right ahead and swap these uh, pole guards on and off. So if you want to ski GS with a slalom pole, you can just swap that off, grab your pole strap, pop it back in. And then you want to swap this over for some slalom training in the afternoon. You just pop it right back on the pole. And it all clips right in. No tools necessary. Very slick system. Um, so I think you should probably check that out if you need some new slalom poles. It's really sweet. And it saves you a lot of time and a lot of less hassle from working around with the, uh, the screwdriver and the screws and losing screws in the snow and all that stuff that we've all been through. Awesome, man. We also have uh, like a myriad of awesome bags. I know we're actually going to give away this 130 liter trolley bag. Um, but we have a bunch of bags that are great. And we also have uh, protective uh, back braces and that sort of stuff. So yeah, I think that it's important to know that we, we really are a one-stop shop when it comes to product and definitely look into this other stuff that we make because it's really top notch. Cool. Thanks, Brandon. So we are, as part of Stump the Experts tonight, we do have, there's actually a ski tuner that weighs, he's about 5'2 and 130 pounds in here. I just, he's in here. He comes with a bag to wax your skis full time. <laughs> but um, so Kaz, <laughs> Kaz, it's true. My kids always used to, they, they used to just cut the things and they'd crawl into these things. They're so big. But Kaz, how are we doing on some questions for protective or other stuff? Is uh, it kind of quiet up there? It's pretty quiet, yeah. Okay, no so questions. just so you know, I'm not giving this bag away unless people participate and interact with some questions. The person that we feel has interacted the, with some great questions and is active, we're gonna shift this bag. And I can tell you there's some cool stuff inside of it. I'm not gonna tell you what's in there, but trust me, there's some good stuff in there. So anyway, please send in some questions. So, I mean, for, for us at Atomic, I think it was important tonight, we wanted to start with the helmets and the goggles and the poles. These are amazing products that we make. We've been making them a long time and we just, we never really put the effort, it's my fault, you know, um, and, and it's really something now with the connected devices and the poles. The goggles are amazing. Um, I think Outside Magazine, the last couple of years, you know, rated our goggles like some of the best top gear. So really exciting. So Brownie, thank you so much for that. So of course, you know, the bread and butter is skis, boots, and bindings. And as part of that, it's like, Yes, we're here to, to sell product and inform you of, you know, what's going on, but we do a lot around skiing that you maybe, you know, you don't see all the time. We just want to talk about quickly. So the first thing I really want you to make you aware of is our partnership with the U.S. skiing um, and the Canadian ski team. So we have a number of athletes on each team. I'm going to run through their names here in a second. Um, you know, we're really proud of this team. The, when, as you get up into the World Cup, and everybody's seen that, you know, the, the USSA kind of diagram, start at the bottom, get up to the top. So at our top level, it's, you know, that team is taking care of our global race team in Europe, which is made up of about 25 people. It's run by Christian Hoflinger and Joe Libra and their whole teams, Christian Nozick. And they, there's about 22 reps and then the leadership team, um, they're traveling, you know, all over the, all over the place, tracking all the athletes, taking care of them. And for us, you know, with the U.S. ski team, I mean, we're so proud to have, of course, Michaela Schifrin, um, who's just an amazing athlete, Breezy Johnson, Bella Wright, Travis Gadon, Kyle Negamir, Ava Jemison, and 
you know, and um, Jay Poulter are new this year to the development team. And then up in Canada, we have another great stable of Eric and Jeffrey Reed, Aaron Molzinski, um, Amelia Smart, uh, Brody Seeger, and Ali Neumeyer. Um, you know, so we're so proud of those athletes. The other things that we do um, that is a, maybe a surprise, news coming out, it hasn't broke yet, is that Atomic for the next two years is gonna, spoke, is gonna partner with NASTAR. Um, we're really excited to bring the Atomic brand and partner with NASTAR. We're gonna have branding opportunities. We'll be on the bibs and flags. So we'll be there all year at over a hundred resorts. So if you go on NASTAR, uh, NASTAR.com, um, you'll see, you know, where all the resorts are. Um, and then we'll be at the national championships. And Darren, you're still there, right? I am, Gabe. So, you know, are you going to, we got to get you all hooked up and um, get you back pace setting, right? Well, yeah, I've been going to the Midwest, doing a few <clears throat> of those uh, over the last couple of years, and beginning uh, before Christmas and yeah. And uh, some of Tahoe as well. But and once in a while, if it all fits in national championships. But yeah, it's, it's actually where I started ski racing. I mean, that's how I got my I cut my teeth ski racing was through the NASCAR program. So I've got big love for it. Yeah. So we're really excited about that. And then the other thing that we do um, is, you know, we partner with PSA and Steve runs our pro team. And we were able to sign Zoe Mavis from Big Sky, who's a new member of the development team. So that was really exciting. So all of these great programs, plus all the work that Steve and Kaz do to get, you know, our demo skis out there and work with clubs. So we're really excited. So that's kind of your lead in to all the product we need. All right. So yeah. what do we need for all this stuff? Well, we need to start with ski boots. All right. And keeping with starting something new, we'll lead off with our new Club Sport 70 low cut boot. Uh, this boot's brand new for us. And what's really cool about it is it goes from all the way down to a size 21.5, um, which is a full adult lug at that 21.5. So you can still click into a regular adult norm binding. Um, but this boot's a little bit wider than most of our true race plug boots. So it's really a great op option for those younger racers who are still looking for a high performance race boot with a good fit, but it's just not quite as aggressive as a lace up boot is gonna be. Um, so these are really awesome boots. Goes from a 70 flex to a uh, 110 flex. And then we also have a 130 flex in the club sport. That's a really great boot for the masters who don't wanna be in a club boot anymore. That's the boot that I ski in because I don't wanna wear a lace up anymore because I'm not racing. Um, it's just a little bit more comfortable. It's a 96 millimeter last. Um, so it's still really that narrow high performance fit. Just a little bit different. Um, that brings us into our, our two pony system that we run with boots. So we have both the STI and the team issue. STI is a 93 millimeter last boot, has a low instep, and it really grabs those ankles and keeps that heel like nice and locked in in this boot. Uh, it goes from a 70 low cuff to a 90 low cuff, and then we have a 110, a 130, and a 150. The 150 is lifted, so that will need to be ground right off the bat. Right off the bat. All of our race boots come with a stock setup of a 16 degree forward lean, and that can be moved up to three different settings. So you have 16, 17, and 18 degrees. Um, our, our opposite move from the, uh, from the lowest volume STI boot is our team issue boot. The team issue we have at a 110 flex, a 130 flex, and a 150 lifted option as well. This boot's 95 millimeter last, so it's a little bit wider in the forefoot, but it also has a much taller instep, and a little bit more room around the ankle than the STI does. So we have these two awesome offerings between our plug race boots that you can kind of choose the right fit for your foot and still have a really high performance race boot. Um, we've had a lot of success across all ages and success for years and years in the World Cup with this boot. I'm sure Darren at some point was in one of these boots, but they've been around forever and they're really tried and true. So we're really excited to have those things on board. Um, moving into our race skis, we have our slalom series. Which is, if I may, Kaz, if you 
if you feel like there's some really important questions about boots that you want to jump into, um, let us know, but our Steve will just keep rolling. So, yeah, and we can also go through and hit some questions at the end. Yep. Um, so just, yeah, Cass, keep an eye on it. If you have anything that's important, you can, you can interrupt us, Cass. Just pretend we're in a tent at an event. <laughs> so Thanks, our S9 Steve. is our slalom series of skis. We have our junior skis that range from a 131 up to a 138. And then we also have our tweener construction skis, which you see here. This is our 145. It's just going to be a little bit stiffer. Uh, going to give you the athlete a little bit more acceleration out of the turn uh, within our 145 and our 152 sizes. And then we, when we move into our fist construction skis, we have our 155, our 157, which are both fist legal for women. The 55 just being a little bit softer, really great option for a smaller fist lady or for for a fist boy or a U16 boy who just isn't quite ready to get onto that full bore fist ski as a first year. Um, the 57 and then the 65, obviously the men's, the men's fist ski. Uh, these skis have been crushing constantly. As you, as you see with Michaela Schiffer out there, uh, never, never have they been the issue that she didn't want. So when we move over to our, our uh, Gene Hine series, we have the same setup with the junior tweener and full-on fist construction skis. Um, the G9 GS skis go from a 131 up through a 166 in that junior construction. Um, then you run into a 173 and a 180 and 87 in that tweener construction. When you get into those upper skis, you get our new technology. So some of you may remember from the past, we had ServoTech. ServoTech was a carbon rod that ran from the tip of the plate up to the mid front of the ski. We now have RevoShock. So if I can get this up a little closer here, let's see. RevoShock technology is a spring steel wrapped in an elastomer that works as an, a suspension for your ski. So as, it, as you go through the turn and you hit any vibration within the snow, these weighted elastomers help ground the ski, but it also helps retain the energy that you get within those bumps and put it back into the ski. So as you're coming out of the turn and the ski is working and these are working to keep your ski grounded, they help you keep that energy instead of just dissipating it to nothing with the chatter. It's a really exciting technology. They've been testing it on the World Cup for years now, and we finally get to offer it to you guys um, on all of our adult fist construction skis. Lastly, we have our RS models, which are some adult construction skis, but they're made for our masters. So we have a 176 GS ski, a 183 GS ski, and a 190 GS ski. And all the way through, they're a little bit more shaped, so they have a little more side cut because they don't have to be fist legal, but they're still that super high-end, high-performance race ski. Great, and you, ooh, we went through everything. So Cass, how are we doing on questions? Good. We have a few rolling in now. All right. Um, so hold that, hold that thought. We're going to jump right in. So that's exciting. But one thing I also, before we jump into all the questions and we put Blair to work, Blair, do you have anything to add to, with all your experience and knowledge? Um, you know, just, I mean, just give us a quick summary or some, some hot tips. What, I mean, what are your thoughts on the product line? Yeah, Steve covered it really good, but uh, a couple extra things that uh, I see coaching U12 up here and being around U14s and U16s. Uh, new this year, we have a 124 slalom and S9, which is great as a dual event ski for those younger U10s that want the real race construction. So that's something new. Um, the 155 that we brought in was to address, as Steve said, the U16 lighter weight athletes who didn't want to be on the women's 157 and the difference is the width underfoot so it's a little quicker edge to edge and the titanium is a little thinner so a little more pop for a lighter athlete um, he covered off all of the boots very very well i would say that uh, in helmets and goggles these are all for our world cup athletes so marco schwartz who has a very weird head shape really didn't fit into our helmets and this is the first fittable helmet like a ski boot on the world cup 
the ability to have width and length and dialing it all in was really, really cool. And then you, when you add the shock sense in is that when you get hit with a gate, whether it be a GS gate or a slalom gate, you never know the, the impact. So this is a way to tell whether your helmet is good to go or needs to be replaced. As a coach, I can have it on my phone. I can have all 10 kids on my team with the shock sense and watch one in real time and scroll through them when I'm on the chairlift to see if anybody's had an impact or anybody's been hurt and monitor that way. So uh, lots of great new things. I think the, um, the other one too, and Steve kind of alluded to it, but uh, we won Solden last year with Lucas Broughton on the new construction. It was hidden under the graphic and came back in the second race, second GS race uh, with a young Croatian skier winning on it. So race proven already with the new, uh, the, the new Rio shock skis. So uh, Brownie covered it great. And those are just a couple tidbits from my side. Awesome. So. Well, thank you so much. So now we're into stuff, the experts bags up for grabs. So Kaz, let's make sure we're taking, you're taking notes and I'll take notes who the questions are from and um, we'll jump in. So I have a question from Maddie. Um, she's asking if there's a recommended U16 ski uh, for a lighter athlete. And if you do, uh, what are the lengths of that ski? Okay, I think Kaz, that's kind of up your alley. Yeah. <laughs> Did, so, you, was there a specification on, on uh, discipline? Are we talking both disciplines here? Um, a GS ski, tweener GS ski. So, okay. so yeah, uh, I know that a, most of our U16s are are liking the 187 uh, Revo G9, and um, you know for for the lighter athlete, they can definitely go with the 180 G9 at the 21 meter radius. Awesome, that's great. So, what else you got? questions so i have a question from bernard about poles okay um he loves the idea of using the same poles for slalom and gs okay do you recommend to size them for slalom or gs in terms of the yeah. length Kaz, i mean you're the closest thing to a, a race a race start gate out of all of us so you're gonna take that one i think too so I, I would I would try and um, you know definitely recommend having a set pole length for slalom and GS, but I think if you were to choose, you you definitely want to stick on the the shorter end of things, um, just to avoid the the consequences of a pole that's too long. Okay. Awesome. Cool. And surfing through. So I have a question from Mitch. Okay. He's asking if the brand new tech is only for the big GS keys because he doesn't see it on the, uh, any of the shorter GS keys. That's a great question, Brownie. You wanna... So it, it, it runs into our tweener skis, but it's not on our junior skis. So Revo will get on to some of the longer skis, but when you're 166 and below, you do not have any Revo, Revo tech on those skis. So, so 170, that's 173, that's why he's missing that one there. Yeah. So 173 and up. Yeah. Awesome. So here's a question that I just saw come up my sharp eyes. What's the difference between servo tech and Blair? This is for you. So compare like the servo tech that we've had to Revo and get a little, you know, what, what are your feelings there? Yeah. So um, everything we do is tested on the World Cup first and then brought into our fist collection. It's, uh, the racers are really driven to keep the ski on the snow below the gate. So it's all about how much acceleration can you have coming out of the turn. And part of that is snow contact. And so ServoTech did an amazing job. We had so lots of great wins on it, but this new version and the ability to tune it with the elastomer and the steel spring, as Brownie mentioned, really did a better job at dampening and a better job at accelerating out of the turn. And so um, in year one, it's on the 183, 188, 93, but spoiler alert, watch for us next year to bring it out on the lower length. So in year one, it's on the Fiskies, but uh, Junior GS for sure will get this new uh, construction in the future as well. Cool. So Kaz, you're just, are you ready with another question? 
Yeah. Um, I've got a question about ready. helmets now. You're ready to roll. Okay. Awesome. Uh, which of your helmets have any dial adjustments, if any? So all of our, you want me to answer that one? Yeah, all yeah. of the all of the slalom helmets have occipital adjust. So our uh, our count RSSL helmets all have that. In the GS helmets, because they're fittable, you can take off the the cage underneath and you can adjust it to four different sizes. So it's fully adjustable. Once you've got it set up for your head, you don't really adjust it ever again. So it's not a dial adjustment, but it is adjustable and uh, it is an occipital adjust as well. So. And Kaz, who asked who asked that question? Um, it's a fellow named Rip Preday. Okay, remember those names now. Yeah. Because we've got to pick Stump the Expert winner for the bag. So um, let's see, what, what other questions do you have? Um, one question I had was, will you guys be selling downhill and Super G skis? Absolutely. We have them in stock. They're on our race form. So if you need them, there's actually been a lot of interest um, in some speed skis. So mostly the junior level Super G sizes, 200, 192, 185, and then downhill skis for men and women. Um, so we have, you know, some 218s and 215s in stock. And you can put, you can take an X bar 16 or the mod uh, 19, and those go nicely on there. There's also, you know, extreme, you know, chance maybe you wouldn't want an X20, but for most of the junior kids, that's kind of where that lies. So Kaz, back to you. What do you got? Okay. I have a question from Jeff Tulock. What are the edge angles for slalom and GS that come from the factory? Ah, great question. Who wants to answer this? I guess I will, since everyone's quiet, since the, Mr. Mr. D, the ex World Cup ski tuner. So I, I, having two girls in college now, luckily, you know, they, they have retired from ski racing, but I, I was lucky enough to tune some skis in the World Cup, as Darren will remember, for the women's team. And um, so the skis, for for slalom and for slalom skis, uh, one and three. Um, GS is one and three, and then Super G and downhill they are um, 0.8. Let's see, point. I'm trying to think on the side. I think it's um, base bevel is 1.2 actually, and um, uh, three. So pretty aggressive, but that's how they come set up. So Blair, you want to, did I screw that up? That's kind of where I was at with that, but you're the sage. You can correct me. If you're talking, uh, all of our junior products, they come race right out of the box. As you mentioned, the Fiskies, the slalom and the GS come a little bit more generic with half a degree base and a one degree side. So you can set up the, or, or two degree sides, so you can set up the angles. Um, so you're right, Guy. That's a great, yeah, great question for the, for the big Fisky. So great question. Any questions about wax? Anybody asking about wax cast? We're not really a wax company, but last year, I think we did a, a big discussion about floral waxes or non floral waxes. My car. What's that? Valentine, B-A-L-L-A-N-T-I-N-E. Ryan. I think Ryan went live. I don't know who Ryan is, but anyway, Kaz, what else you got for us? I have a question from Greg Klein. He's ah, asking yes, if the, uh, if the U14 Greg. GS radius regulation has changed. And if not, what is the shortest GS with the 17 meter radius? Okay, Kaz, that's I'll, sort of I'll answer out. that one. Um, the U14 GS radius did not change. Uh, for the ussa regulations so the shortest gs ski with the 17 meter radius will be the 152 g9 so greg did we let us know if we answered that in the chat column you can let so it's great to have you um, asking questions thank you so greg owns willies in uh, pennsylvania great ski shops and uh went to gmes and cu ski form so it's great to have you on the call I think with D Money, you were behind 
you were behind uh, Greg at uh, GMBS, right? I think he graduated before you. Darren, you were live? Or after me. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was before, it was before. Yeah, or after me. Yeah, yeah. Greg is before me, yeah. Yeah. All right, what else do we got? Any questions? Back in the old Jared? days. So, what is the story behind the color red for Atomic? Greg just said he's older. Blair, I guess, I mean, it's either you or Darren that are going to answer this, the color red. <laughs> well, um, Atomic was started in 1955 by a guy named Alias Romauser. He was a young guy who couldn't afford a pair of French racing skis, Dynamique, and it was the Atomic Age. So that's how we got the name Atomic. Uh, his favorite logo was the Mercedes star and we stole that for our skis and it's been there ever since. And, uh, and red was, uh, the fastest color. So we've been red for a really long time through the Billy Johnson red sled days. And it's just the color that stuck with us. And, uh, when you look to TV in the world cup, you know, who's blue, you know, who's white and you definitely know who's red. So. Right. And it also happens to be the number one color on the flag of Austria. So, <laughs> yeah not forget that and so, switzerland yes yes red so now we we, we if we bleed atomic and it's uh if you bleed atomic it's got to be red right you bleed red. red it's the color blood sean could type in i don't know if he could type in the the, the color to the pantone color. 186 c 186 c is that's what i bleed so um awesome so Cass, just keep hitting this, man. What do you got? So question from Stefan. Um, any changes on the new binding or on the, any changes on the binding or plate for this coming year? Sage. <laughs> um, yeah, we really, we, we've really worked hard on our, on all of our plates. On the junior plates, they are uh, quite light and quite flexible. Uh, they have elliptical holes, really easy to turn, just lifters, not, not stiffeners. Um, and as you move up through, we add some dampening uh, to the plates. One thing you'll notice on the World Cup right now is that the guys and girls are on a, a red binding that looks slightly different. So spoiler alert, there is a binding where we're testing with new plates that works with the Revo Shock that'll come out next year, uh, testing this spring and um, stay, stay tuned for more there. But no, we're still using uh, in speed DX bindings, which is either 12 in, 16 in, 19 in. And uh, the nice thing about it is you can move your position on the ski. So if you get a ski that's a little longer, you can slide yourself forward and initiates a little quicker. So um, we've had that for many, many years back to the SBAR days. Great. Thanks, Blair. Uh, question, another question from Sean. What is the recommended prepping for uh, redacted GS and solemn ski? And how many layers and which temperature of wax? Kaz, you want to take that one? You're the wax master right now. <laughs> so I think it depends on, you know, what brand of wax you're using. Um, and, but you generally want to start with a with a softer wax to for the wax particles to get into the ski base at the beginning of the season. So you just want to build up that foundation in the ski base and get a good layer before the ski season. Yeah, so I'll add to that. I just say, like, I mean, a mid temperature wax, you know, regular like red, red mid temp is, is a way to go. And, and brushing is really important. And uh, yeah, just, you do some cycles. So you just gotta, you, you, it's good to brush with a, a steel or brass and really open up the structure and scrape it and like scrub it down with nylon and then get back to like putting some more like red in there. Plus it looks really cool when uh, those white atomic stars on the bases are a little like a little pink. Get a little pink in there, running yeah. cycles through. Yep. Yeah. That's how you know they're fast. Yeah, you know they've awesome. had a lot of wax on them, but yeah, <laughs> had some fast skis with some pink stars up front. Great, great. Well, I got another question from Greg Klein okay. about the Colt bindings. 
Um, yes. Are they standard DIN or a grip walk? Sage. The Colt grip 7. Walk. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Blair, but the Colt 7 is able to take the, the multiple uh, toes, but once you get up to the 10 and the 12, you're working with the Alpine standard. Yeah, the, the 7 is adult and junior normed. The 10 and 12 are as adult normed, and they are grip walk. Yes. Great. All right, Darren, I think this is a question for you. Um, any ideas about a different boot setup for Slalom and GS? Uh, different setups. I mean, for sure, like for Slalom, you need to have something a little more aggressive, probably – uh, if, if you're neutral, maybe even like positive canting, I think that's probably yeah, important for a quick edge set. But giant slalom, you do want to have the skis be able to like get away from you and extend your legs. So, I mean, I've always uh, gone less edge in boots and run pretty flat skis. But uh, I think it's just important to have a good feel, you know. And and uh, for me, I didn't race World Cup slalom, but I did have a different setup guest boot compared to speed downhill super g which i had one boot and it was just uh it was pretty much flex and the uh the canting was the same but i had different durometer lifters which i found made a little difference between like uh really i like icy snow and aggressive snow so there's a few things you can tweak but you know i mean if you feel comfortable in one boot one good setup you just stick with it and unless you want to kind of play around with a little, little more aggressive boot for small. Awesome, thanks. Blair, how many pairs of boots does your daughter have? Uh, Brooke only well, has right? one. She only has one. She's in a 70 flex. She's really skinny. So we had to beef up the tongues a little bit and uh, yep. make sure that she was touching. So when she flexed the boot flexes, but I'm with Darren, totally agree all the way up to first year fists. One boot works for everything. Yeah. Our guys on the World Cup who experiment with the cuffs, the cuffs they use, the slaloms are a little taller and more direct. The speed cuffs and GS cuffs are a little more tulip shaped, which gives a little more forgiveness just at the top of the turn. And that's the only difference. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, awesome. Sweet. I have a question from David Davis. Does the new helmet technology measure and record just single impacts or accumulated impacts and decelerations over a given period of time? Go ahead, Sage. <laughs> it measures uh, multiple impacts. It records them on your phone and you can scroll through your phone and see the different levels of impacts you've had over time. But it's not like there's the magic number if you're all green impacts are all green. If you go red, then you're pretty much done, so. Yeah, right. The, that's right. The premise is you can't see how much the foam is compressed. So if you've had enough Newton meters to, to compress the foam, then we are asking you to replace it once you've had a, a red yeah. level impact. Yeah, that's right. That's a, great, that's a great question. So I think those questions have been informative about the helmets and so thanks Blair for answering those. No problem. All right, and a question from host. Jack. What is the range on the ski helmet connection for the new connected helmets? I mean, like, what's the range of, of helmets? So, Brown, you want to, I think you mean the range of students from your phone to your helmet, is that what we're talking about? Okay. Yes. Yeah. And are you know that? Yeah, so what happens is the, you, you, most racers don't ski gates with their phone on them. So if you leave yeah. it in your pack at the top of the hill, the shock sensor will store up the data. And when you get back in range, it'll dump it all into your phone. So you don't have to be in range of your phone when you're, when you're skiing. Um, that's yeah, how, it keeps how the data in the sensor. That's right, yep. Yeah, so then you can put your phone in your bag, still train or ski or whatever you need to do, and then you can check it every time you see your phone. That's right. Updates. Yeah. Cool. Were you talking helmet size, Kaz, or you were talking distance from your phone? I was talking distance from the phone. Yeah, no, that was a great question. Range, I was. Which year? <laughs> cool. Sweet. You're All the right. host, Kaz. 
I have a question for you guys. What's the uh, what's the difference between the FIS ski and the RS ski for for the, for our G nines? The FIS skis and what? And the, and RS, the RS, RS race the stock. The biggest difference skis. is going to be the FIS ski is FIS legal, right? So the RS ski is going to be a little bit wider, hundred foot, so they won't fall within the FIS constraints. Then they're also there's they're a different shape. So the 190 is like a 27 meter turn radius. That's not a fist legal 30 meter ski. So then it really comes down to the layout of the ski. It's still a full adult fist construction ski though. Yeah, so the question is, you know, some coaches are thinking and when my kids were, were at that stage, you know, do I take them and move them up to a big ski like the 187 or do you keep them on the 83, 24 meter because it's just a little easier to turn. And, you know, I think it's six to one, half a dozen or another of what you think, but for sure the 80, in my mind, and I'd love to have people disagree with me or agree with me either way, you know, for the 183, 24 meter, I think if you can stay on that ski, it's pretty snappy, it's turny. And then as you get a little heavier and a little bigger, you can go to that 187, you know, so that's kind of, that's my own personal. Yeah, it's, it's so, a beefier ski. Yeah. Um, as is going to a bigger, you know, a little bit stronger based ski, it's yeah. going to be quicker if you can control it. Yeah. But you really need to make sure that you're not jumping onto a ski that's too much for you to handle because yeah. if you can't make a turn within the course, it won't be faster. And I can tell all of you guys this that Kaz is the only one that skis on the 193 30 meter now. He's got the he's got the, the muscle for it. Unless Brownie, did you do you still have yours or I would throw my back up. I yeah, yeah. I, so. I so I take whatever Cass says, I do. So. Hey Guy, yeah. Just a, just one point on that is that we're one of the only brands to offer a 187 ski with a 26 meter radius. So if you're a big U16 kid who the courses are set too tight for 30 meters, yeah. we offer that ski for you. And those three skis you're talking about in the RS, the 190 is used on the World Cup skier crest uh, because it's 27 and a half meters. And the reason why they're illegal is they're wider underfoot for, for the fist rules, but they're great skis for the masters. And they yeah, were right. That's a great, that's a great point. And for us, I mean, you can, you, I, hopefully you get a feel for, the, you know, of who we are and the fact that our kids are racing or coaching well, over in Austria in the headquarters, that's multiplied times five. All our engineers, um, you know, they're all ex-ski racers. We've got ex-World Cup winners, um, you know, amazing men and women designing skis, testing with their kids. And that's why for us, I mean, we have so many different ranges. We're providing that, uh, those skis and those different sizes, those different constructions in boots, in skis, in bindings and now of course with protective so i mean it's pretty exciting to to be part of the family and, and see all this so definitely cool anything else pressing on there guys all right a uh, question from jack is there a dealer locator on the website yes there's two so there's one for apcs and then there's one there's a dealer locator but also you're going to get Jack, a list from Megan, and I don't know what day. So Megan, if you want to chime in when you guys are going to send out that dealer list, but Jack, all you got to do is email Kaz or Steve or I, and we'll send you that list, uh, um, you know, tomorrow. Yeah, you could send it directly to these guys or ski racing media is going to be sending out an email probably early yeah. next week with all that. But Jack, we can, we'll help you just email Kaz or Steve or I, but there is a dealer locator. But we want to, we're here for you. We're, this is why we're doing this. This is our job. So we want you to reach out and connect with us, no pun intended, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get back to you. All right. Awesome. Question from Bruce McDonald. Um, Other than the app, what else do you need when purchasing a Shock Sense helmet? Sage. What, is, what, else, what else do you need? Yeah, I don't understand the question. You can buy the helmet with the shock sense installed, or you can buy the helmet on its own and buy 
Shock Sense is an aftermarket product. The app is free to download. It's on the uh, the Apple Store, and it's free to use. And um, that's all you need, and you're ready to go skiing. So Bruce, if Bruce, you need the money to pay for it, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> and Bruce, just to be clear, Bruce is one of our uh, sales. He is our number one race rep, probably in the world. I'm giving him that label. He does a great job. So, and he will let us know if we haven't answered that correctly. So. Um, I hopefully that answered the question. So thanks, Blair, for taking that. You're welcome. Cool. On that, real quick, do you fly it in, put the helmet in to charge the sensor, like the boots? The the sensor comes with a CR fifty. I think it's a fifty fifty two battery, like one in your watch. You can turn the sensor on when you start skiing, and you can turn it off when you're done. If you left it on, it, it would still keep running, but your battery wouldn't last as long. And they, the batteries are user replaceable, so you can replace them as needed, just like your watch. Nice. Cool. So, Kaz, I want you to figure out, you've got to figure out in the next two minutes, or when I'm done doing this little summary, who we're going to give the bag to for being engaged and being part of the event. And... If they're a retailer, they're absolutely, if they were engaged, Mr. Klein was in the running. I think there were some amazing questions about, and I would challenge Greg, if, if he does win the bag, I don't know if he's going to, but he can donate it to a young ski racer um, or somebody, which I think, you know, it's good, or he can keep it, whatever. But Kaz, so you think about that, and just, we're coming to the wrap up here of um, the end of the event. So I just want to thank you. You know, we're praying for snow. Um, go shop early for all your race gear. Go shop early for all the new, our new all mountain Maverick and Maven skis, um, our Hawk boots in the Ultra Prime and Magna um, widths. I mean, go visit us all, you know, an atomic dealer. Um, we've got tons of stuff. Our backland skis, boots, our touring bindings are out there, the Ben Shetlers. Um, amazing skis. And like I said, our new all mountain skis, American Mavens are just awesome. So we had a great year launching them. Um, Kaz, have you come up with a winner for the bag? I have, you know, I, I was going to go with Greg Klein, but he, uh, he conceded in the running. So I think we're going to go with uh, Ed Strap. All right, Ed, and congratulations. All right, Ed. So Ed, you need to get with Kaz and get him your address. And um, we'll, we'll put the ski tuner, like I said, it's a small ski tuner. They don't eat much, about five, 120 pounds. They'll be in there and um, we'll get you all set. I can't thank everybody enough for coming on tonight and spending the hour with us. I mean, the ski season is gonna kick off here um, end of October out at Copper and Loveland. And then, you know, quickly up in, Lake Louise and the World Cup races up there, and then Killington's World Cup races. Beaver Creek will have World Cup races. So there's going to be ski racing everywhere. So thank you so much. I just want to thank Steve. Darren, thank you so much. Kazooie, thanks for running the Stump the Experts. And Sage, Mr. Blair, thank you. And Megan, thank you very much to the ski, ski racing media team. And uh, we wish everybody well. Um, thanks and have a great night. So thanks we're, si us, we're signing off. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Pull the plug.